Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the filter gallery, starting with the artistic filters. So I've chosen a portrait photo for this specifically because we have some really nice, cool ones, like Cutout is a standout one where you can take your original image and make it look like a cutout. And using the filter gallery, you always have the option to do a few different adjustments. So number of levels, I could choose one all the way up to eight, and you'll see that'll slowly add more and more layers of color. However, if I keep it something simplistic like three, we almost get a cool pop art effect without even having to do much work. And then you also have edge simplicity, how much like noise and texture versus just simple shapes it is. And fidelity as well is almost like definition and sharpness of those edges. So this could be great for poster designs, flyer designs, and all different kind of things where it looks like this might have taken a lot more work than it is. But we just had a good starting photo with a clean background and applied a simple artistic filter onto it. Another thing with the filter gallery is that you can always stack effects on top of each other. So I could have this cutout effect and then I could hit this plus button here for a new effect layer and I could choose like a film grain as well. So I could do two filter gallery effects on top of each other. And the order in which they're here is the order in which they're applied, so top to bottom. So if I take that film grain and actually put it below the cutout, now we get a different effect going on because the cutout is happening after the film grain. So in this way, we could stack multiple effects. However, if I ever press OK on the filter, you'll see that it's all one filter. And let's just say, for example, I undo that and was working with smart filters like we talked about in the intro episode to this playlist and I did those same effects. In this case, even under the smart filters, all of the filter gallery is just considered one effect that you did inside of the filter gallery. So in that way, it's a little different than the ones that are individually in the folders, but you can still blend and change the opacity if it is a smart filter. And if you ever double click that filter gallery, you can go back and hide, delete, or rearrange effects. So some other things in the filter gallery aside from the cutout here on a different photo example is just different ways to make it look like it was drawn either with colored pencils or different brushes, different paint application techniques. Let me delete that cutout effect in general and just work on the original photo. But we see we could change it to different styles of art like a fresco painting or a palette knife or just daubs of paint. And depending on the different effect that you use, there's always going to be slightly different parameters that you can adjust. Another way you can choose effects is just with this drop down menu. You can kind of see everything in the filter gallery throughout all the folders. But there's some different useful ones tucked away in here, like I showed you, especially with the cutout. So rather than have a separate episode for every single effect in the filter gallery, you can kind of just get an idea as I flip through them here. The different folders like here's different types of brush strokes there's its own little distort folder with different kinds of distortions especially like this glass distortion can be interesting as even for photos or text or whatever add some glass distortion and refraction and rippling you do ocean rippling then there's also sketch which will turn your photo black and white one really cool one in here is the halftone pattern you can see this can be useful to almost get like that comic book texture or those halftone dots uh, and it turns everything black and white. And remember, you can always press OK on these and then go on to add further adjustments. Like if I did do this black and white thing and then added a gradient map, for example, I could apply custom gradients on that black and white and get unique type of art and graphics from these combinations. And remember, whenever you're dealing with black and white, you can also use the, that information to be great as layer masks, like I showed you in the first episode, where black will hide and white will reveal whatever effects are on the layer mask. So you have some more sketch type of effects. A lot of these do give it black and white looks, but you also have water t paper there. There's only one in the stylized, which is glowing edges. Uh, a lot of these have similar aspects or are almost redundant with other filters like the find edges filter which I'll, we'll see in a later episode but they're still in here 
And then texture could be a really useful one for applying different types of texture, grain, especially like the tiles, patchwork, or stained glass. These can be interesting. You can increase the cell size and combine these to get unique results. So that's the filter gallery. In the next episode of the series, I'm going to kind of jump over the wide angle and I've already done a tutorial on Camera Raw itself. So we're going to jump into the liquify tool, which I think is important, and then we'll jump straight into the folders. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Justin Odisho. You can find all of the episodes of this series in a playlist on my channel, and I'll see you over in the next episode where we cover the liquify tool.